exposure as we investigate the mortgage foreclosure crisis, we see that it is much broader than we initially thought. Today, Michael Young, a futures broker and trader is with us. Michael, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Stan? So what exactly does a futures trader and broker do? Well, we have two roles in life. One, we broker transactions for our customers, which means we take buy and sell orders and execute them on exchanges. And uh, we also trade for our own account for our profit and risk. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully we make money doing that, but occasionally you do lose money. Michael, it's, um, it's Friday afternoon, 5 o'clock Pacific uh, time, uh, November the 4th. How's your week been? It's been really awful. Uh, it's one of the worst weeks we've ever experienced in our firm's history. The primary reason is, is that our clearing broker, MF Global, went out of business on Monday. And it's been uh, a comedy of errors and horrors uh, for our clients and us. So it's been not very much fun. What does it mean to you that they went out of business? Well, normally when a firm goes out of business, what's called the Futures Commission Merchant, which was the part of the business of MF Global that we did business with, uh, is sold. And then the accounts are all moved to the new firm. In this case, the FCM wasn't sold uh, for a variety of reasons, which meant instead of the, uh, the accounts moving, they were frozen, which means our clients could not access their funds. Uh, we could not place trades. So we could do no business. So what bad did you do to deserve that? None uh, other than believing that the management of MF Global and the board of directors of MF Global and the regulators looking at MF Global had done their jobs. So many people who are listening to this and, and watching this, they can't really identify with this. I mean, I, if I have money, I go into my bank. Actually, now I go into my credit union and I, and I make a deposit. Can you analogize this? Can you put it in terms that we would it, understand what you do be, and what MF Global did? It would be like if you, like in my personal trading account, it would be like going to your bank where you kept the bulk of your money mm -hmm. and you'd always have access to it and you would you know, get ready for the weekend and you'd go down to the bank and say, you know, I'm going to go um, to Eastern Washington this weekend, so I need an extra $1,000 because I'm going to buy some extra special wines while I'm there and do a couple of extra things. So you go into the bank and you go up to the teller and you say, could I have my $1,000 I need for the weekend? And the teller would look at you and say, I'm sorry, sir, but your funds are no longer available to you. And that's what happened to you and to your clients? That's what happened to myself and my clients and my firm. And you didn't do anything, there was, you were just happened to be trading through them. We have a contract with them to clear our business and to execute our orders and do our bookkeeping for us. And, our, and we turned our client money over to them. So if we made a deposit in Seattle, it went to the MF Global, mm -hmm. what was called the customer, customer Segregated Funds Account, which is supposed to be separate from the corporate account. But what the allegations at MF Global are is that somehow in their trading schemes that they developed at the corporate level, run by Mr. John Corzine, that they somehow ran out of their own money and started using our money, and therefore our money is not available. And uh, we find that to be a little objectionable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, your money's not available because <laughs> he used it, huh? Um, well, actually, let's. We're going to go to a clip from CNBC where they were talking about this very thing. So let's watch this clip right now. Okay. MF Global. What happened to hundreds of millions of dollars that went missing at MF Global? This story continues to develop. We've got new details emerging. And Kayla Tausch, joins me now with the latest on the story. Kayla, what do you know? Maria, that's been the big question, though. Where did that more than $600 million go missing from client accounts? Well, I spoke with one source familiar today who claimed the money's not missing at all, that that's a misperception. It just got directed to the wrong accounts when the firm rushed to liquidate positions worth some $27 billion. So the misdirection of the money was just that, an accounting blip that's being corrected, the source said. Uh, the source also said the company was in compliance with regulators and uh, regulations at the CME Group, its exchange regulator, as well as the CFTC, as of last Monday, one week before it declared bankruptcy. But federal officials remain dubious, mainly because of the size of that shortfall. Uh, the shortfall has shrunk from close to a billion dollars over the weekend to $633 million as of yesterday, which also raised the question of why there was a gap caused by liquidation when the company was trying to sell itself and had yet to declare bankruptcy. Maria, we should get those answers by tomorrow, which is the deadline for the trustee to transfer all of those customer accounts away from MF Global, presumably with all the money in them. Mr. Young, uh, they talk about on the, on the clip there in CNBC as if this were an accounting blip. Is that right? I don't think it's any accounting blip. This was a company that knew exactly what it was doing. It was reach What had happened was these companies make their bulk of their money in good times by interest income earned. 
And unfortunately, with the Fed at a zero rate policy or close to zero rates, mm -hmm. this firm wasn't making any money there. So it was really stretched to turn a profit. So what they did was they devised schemes, very complex bond repo transactions in foreign debt securities to achieve an above average rate of return. Normally, that would have been fine. In fact, John Corzine's trading schemes would have worked out had he not put so many on. But when you realize that what the management of MF Global did, with, with the approval apparently of the board of directors, uh, leveraged the company up 40 times its net worth. So if you lose 3% of your trade, you're wiped out. And what happened was they lost 3% of their trade, and they were called for more margin. They drew down their credit lines. They sent all the money they had to meet their margin calls. And then at the end, they had no more money left. They took my client's money to meet their margin calls. And that's the problem. So if they, if they took your client's money and yours, what's happened to your trades? The trades that we have on are on regulated commodity exchanges. So they're still open. We've been unable to trade those positions, which means my personal equity has been at risk all week, and I've lost money in trades I would have traded out of because I could not access my account. So it's been a very, very uh, a negative impact on my clients and myself. So what kind of thing would you would you buy or sell? I'm not asking about a specific trade, but what, what would you well, like? We would deal in wheat and corn and soybeans and Standard & Poor's futures, Dow futures, bond futures. Mm -hmm. So if, so if you bought wheat futures um, expecting it to go up and it went down and it keeps going down and down and down, you're stuck. You're stuck until you can trade your account. That's correct. And because of what MF Global did, your clients are stuck too. We were stuck as well. Whoa. Well, at that point in time, it's, it, MF Global was the proximate cause of our problem. Whatever, whatever they did, uh -huh. you know, it looks like they dipped into the customer segregated funds. That's that's the general analogy of what, what our general reason why we're having the problem. Uh -huh. But after that, the regulatory response was pathetic, and the response to the Chicago Mercantile Exchange is abhorrent. You know, this is an absolutely perfect segue because we've come to the close of this segment. But in the next segment, we want everybody to stay tuned because we're going to talk about the CFTC, and those are some things that you're going to want to know because, believe it or not, they impact you. So. Let's go to that next segment uh, right after this break.